Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what's algebraic geometry, or maybe more precise to this continuation, continuation is what are sheaves. Sheaves take three, and finally we will make it to some definition. Um, hopefully explained well enough that you agree with my big from small statement here, what are sheaves, and also hopefully well explained enough so that you have a good idea what sheaves are. So um, when I first saw sheaves, it was like, yeah, it, it's not that difficult to understand the definition. It is a bit tricky. There's a lot of things involved, but it's not super difficult. But to really get a feeling for what a sheaf is, it takes a while. And I'm hoping this will be a little bit helpful. It will be helpful for you to get an idea of what sheaves are and that they're actually a good idea. <laughs> well, that's, that's already important. And uh, also everywhere. Okay, so let's have a look, and I will have one run, running example. Um, hopefully, an easy example. I just take the pre sheaf of continuous or the sheaf of continuous functions on the real line. So what you see right now on the screen is maybe not a really good picture of the real line, but it's still a very good picture of pre sheaf. So pre sheaf is well, whatever. My my space is in, in my example is just a real line, but here it's, it's just this x space. And the pre sheaf is just a collection of things associated to open sets, such that you have some nice uh, restriction maps between your sets. So the picture is actually uh, really good, right? So in this case, in my example here, where our space is just a real line, and we associate just the continuous functions for my open set U to uh, every kind of open set. Uh, and then the restriction maps are just the honest restriction maps. And this is a really nice example of a sheaf. Essentially, a, everything that looks like a function is a pre sheaf. That's that's what it should be. Um, but this idea, this picture is really beautiful. I stole it from a very very nice presentation that is linked in the description. Um, yeah. Anyway, so um, this this picture of a pre sheaf that you have kind of data associated to points and open sets and whatever something like that is actually really really cool. And yeah, so that's a pre sheaf. And I hopefully will now kind of motivate what a sheaf is along this example of continuous functions, which I call a pre sheaf here, but because right now it's just a pre sheaf, and I'm trying to cook up the definition of a sheaf for you. I feel like it's one of those definitions where you will agree that it's actually a good definition, but is it really a definition I could have come up with? That's less clear. It's kind of pretty brilliant in some sense to kind of boil it down to some basic properties. Okay, the first thing you realize, um, or the first thing you want to note here, is this locality condition that I will call L, and will I not repeat anymore. Um, so L, so L locality is the following. So if you have a function, as in the picture up here, right, you have this blue function, which roughly goes like this, and I know that it kind of restricts to two things down here, what is it, this guy and maybe this guy or something, um, and yeah, so the function itself is determined by what it does on open covers. In other words, uh, when I know it up here, I know it down here as well. Well, that's the whole point. Or determines, is determined, determines, not so clear. But anyway, here's the formal property. Whenever you have something in my space, remember these are just functions uh, from you uh, well, to, the, to the ground field, which is in this case R, so just continuous functions. We go back, this guy here, um, we go further. And now let's say you restrict them on, they're the same on all the little pieces, right? All they're the same, all always the same down here. Then the functions have to be the same. And this is kind of, well, what it is for continuous functions. If you restrict them and you kind of know them on enough open covers, like, like a patchwork, you know them on all the patch pieces, or the, then you know the function itself. And this is called a locality property, right? Because you can kind of read it off. Uh, the function is determined by what it does on open sets. For every f and g, if they are the same on open sets, they are the same on, they're just the same, right? So that's the that's locality. This is clearly true for, well, maybe not clearly, but if you think about it for a second, you will agree that this is true for my continuous functions example here. So and this is one of the first properties you want the sheaf to satisfy. Kind of everything is kind of determined in a reasonable local sense. Okay. The second one, and I'm swapping a little bit my 
uh, picture here. So this is not the picture of, of continuous functions on the real line anymore. This is a picture of, of uh, the sheaf of vector fields, but you will get the point anyway. So gluing is the following, and is again true for my continuous functions examples, is that you can, this is the big from small. You can glue together a big one, like, uh, well, in this example here, the blue one, you can glue it together from small pieces. Then this would be the picture kind of the other way around, right? You can glue it together from small pieces. Or here, you have a red vector field at the top, and you have a blue vector field at the bottom, and they intersect, and where they intersect, in the purple vector field, yeah, blue and red intersect in purple, in the purple vector field, they are the same, and then I can glue them together to get a bigger, bigger vector field. Okay, here's a formal property, I call it G, so if I have two things, and a lot of i and j, a lot of indices, if I have a red vector field and I have a blue vector field, and they agree on some purple part, right, they agree here in the purple intersection, then I can glue them together to a new one, and that's not just, well, some, but there's a unique one, such that if you restrict it, so the big one here in the picture, if you restrict it to the smaller ones, you will get the, the original smaller ones back. Right? This is really this gluing together a uh, picture of like a, a patchwork, if you want, a puzzle. A puzzle is maybe not completely correct, so I originally wanted to pick up, uh, kind of put up a picture of a puzzle here, but it's not quite correct, because you, you put the pieces not, so here you really overlay the pieces, right? You have the purple region in the middle. For a puzzle, you don't quite do that, but if you want to have the puzzle picture in mind, that's totally fine. So kind of a puzzle picture for uh, this gluing property of sheaves. You really overlay Puzzle with overlay, if you want. So you really overlay them in the purple property, uh, the purple picture. And this is now the definition, and a very, very general one, which we will never use in this generality. We'll just use a, a slightly different one. We'll see that in a second. But just to have everything on one slide. A sheaf and a prey sheaf, or the other way around. A prey sheaf and a sheaf. A prey sheaf, let's say, of sets on some topological space, is just a collection of sets for all open sets. Um, yeah. That's just what it is, and a collection of restriction maps. Exactly the picture down here. Really, just this is really the picture of a prey sheaf, and uh, a sheaf is then a prey sheaf satisfying the two previous properties: local uh, locality and gluing. And really, my picture of a sheaf is this purple overlay of red and blue. That's my picture of a sheaf. Um, as an example. Hopefully this is kind of, hopefully this was motivated well enough that, that the next example makes some sense. Of course, our continuous functions should be a sheaf example. But a non-sheaf example, which is something that is just a prey sheaf, so functions things are prey sheaves. But here is a difference between a prey sheaf and a sheaf. For example, bounded functions, that it can't be a sheaf, because it can glue together a non-bounded function from bounded functions. Right? It's very simple, actually. Uh, a non-bounded function like a line that goes to infinity, you can glue them together upon, by, by a lot of bounded pieces. So that's not a local condition, and that's why it's not a sheaf. Hope that makes some sense. So, prey sheaf, function things. Um, sheaves, function things with local properties, like continuous. Hopefully that makes some sense. And what we then really do in algebraic geometry, Here's my favorite picture of algebraic geometry. So algebraic geometry really likes, when it's algebra, it's in the name, right? It really likes algebraic objects like rings or vector spaces or algebras or something like that. So we will play really the same game, just to replace sets with rings, for example, and functions with homomorphisms of rings. Well, that's what you do. And that's what algebraic, that's what sheaves are in algebraic geometry. Exactly the same thing, which is all these gluing properties, but now the objects we kind of are studying are like rings, right? And that's what algebraic geometers do. Uh, so here, algebraic geometry, and here, rings, and they really like one another. Anyway, I hope it makes some sense now what sheaves are supposed to be. Uh, if not, I'm very sorry. This kind of worked for me very well, this description of first thinking of it like a like a discrete version on a graph, and then kind of beefing it up to this uh, example of continuous functions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.